All right. Gotcha. gotcha. Last recording. Last recording. And you're over here with your big ass face. <laughs> you can know. You can see that it's not. It's been a while since we did this. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of V Time, episode one five zero. Oh, big five zero. Now, to be fair, this number is nothing special. Uh, it's just one five zero. It's not like five hundred, not one k, not ten k, not one hundred, not nothing special. But yep. because it is such a nice round number, uh, I decided to do something special for this one. Alex, do you know what I did? No, I have no clue. Now put this, is this a surprise even to me. You have no clue. I have not a clue. I put this on Apple Podcasts potentially, hopefully, probably, please. <laughs> oh, he's stepping it up a bit. <laughs> yep. Now we're on the podcast sites for anybody that's listening to this. They can just listen to it audio only. They don't have to be on YouTube to watch us talk about the cards. That is a little bit ramble. of a. Um, <laughs> disadvantage with not being able to see the full card effect so if we read something wrong to you this is our fault and we apologize but you know we're idiots what do you expect <laughs> oh you've made a grave mistake and having me read greed cards over just audio yep i am so sorry for the listeners reading listening to my gibberish you know what's <laughs> the best part i haven't set it up yet so I could be completely lying right now. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see whenever <laughs> this episode comes out. <laughs> uh, but what well, better way to get back to V-Times than <laughs> with this? And oh boy, mm -hmm. do we got a big ass V-Time for you. We got a, a good amount of leaks to talk about. Almost every single card from set eight that dropped that we haven't covered yet. As exactly. well as a good bundle of spicy news. <laughs> spicy news. You know it's really spicy when Ava and Alex is like, oh shit, this happened. Yeah, this happened. Mm. Anyway, without further ado, let's get this show on the road. But before that, this never changes. If you're interested in buying any cars from TCG Player, please use our fill link down below. Your purchases through this link help support the channel so we can bring more great videos like this straight to you guys. And with that script to part of the way, let's go straight into leaks, starting us off with some nifty Dragon Empire rares. Alex, take it away. Uh, Sublime Lance Dragon. This is a great two rare. Yes, rare. Auto, when this unit is placed on rear guard, cost counter blast two. Choose one of your opponent's rear guards and bind all of the cards on the chosen circle. I think this is intentionally made to combat <laughs> overdress. <laughs> I mean, cool thing about this card is if you're using uh, Tommy Yur, you can call this from your soul because it's on place and just completely snipe out something completely. Um, some people are thinking that the new ride line that's not beside Tommy Yur is also going to be doing something with binding, possibly. So Ooh. we shall see. Well, we got a little a bit of hints to what the new ride lines are going to do, especially when we ever get, if we get to the Brent Gate ride line and talk about it. Mm -hmm. But we'll get to that later. For right now, we're going to move on and not talk about too many of these smaller cards because we do have a lot to cover. For yes. example, we got another Stoikea Grade 2. Uh, title Boar Brave Shooter. That's a mouthful. Um, continuous rear guard during your turn. If you have another Grade 2 or greater unit in the same column as this unit, it gets power plus 5. So it becomes a 15. Uh, why would you want to do this? Well, because we're getting Maelstrom and Maelstrom likes swapping rear guards. So this is probably a hint that, you know, what Maelstrom's are going to end up doing. I mean, you're not wrong. That is basically hitting the, uh, what's it called? The hammer on the note, no, the nail on the camera. The, uh, what's the fucking saying? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody knows what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And this is the best part about this potentially being one of the, our first podcast episodes. Mm-hmm. I got to make sure in my own head that I'm giving even more effort into speaking clearly. <laughs> oh, yeah. So if you were the podcast, this is also a grade two 10K base common. Hey, because that could matter. That does matter. It's not a grade one. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving on, moving on, moving on. We got jumping around between set eight. We also got some leaks for the Chrono uh, <sighs> deck set. This time so, we saw our first stride. What do you want to say? 
I, this is my first, I saw that I read the effect, but I've never actually seen the art of the card. Holy cow, the amount of like just text uh, like alongside of everything. Like, <laughs> it's so much going on. <laughs> Dude, it's strides. Strides are back and strides always had a lot of text. Speaking yeah, of a I lot figured. of text, we're talking about interdimensional dragger, dragon, fate rider dragon. Dragon dragon's yep. back. Dragon dragon. Uh, as per mention, it is a grade four strike, so it has the whole 15k plus power, yada, 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 gear chronicle, dark states, all the shenanigans, and does have triple drive, don't worry. <laughs> but it has a nifty ability. First off, it already has a stride ability, being able to stride, and the stride ability stays the same. That's a grade three, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Auto Vanguard, when this unit attacks, counter blast one and turn a car from your G zone face up and put a rear guard on the bottom of your deck. Search your deck for up to one card with grade plus one of the card put on the bottom of your deck for the cost and call it to rear guard and shuffle your deck. Choose one of your units, it gets power 5k until the end of turn for each face up card in your G zone. This thing is a little bit stupid, if you ask me. So the fun fact of it gets plus five for every face-up card in your G-Zone, alongside your crest also giving plus five for every card in your G-Zone means it's going to get plus 10 for every card in your G-Zone problem, pretty much. Yep. Um, it can choose itself for this. Is it just choose a unit? It doesn't have to be the rear guard. Um, and now we see why the crest also puts things to zero, the grades down to zero. Yeah, being able to call just a grade one, Speaking of which, for the stride deck said GG, uh, mm -hmm. you're you're just snowballing into what you want to do, and then the amount of power that's being dished out because of the crest and this card alone is mm -hmm. starting to scare me. <laughs> yeah, because this card fl uh, flips up a card in your G zone, so it already sets up plus five to your front row immediately for the crest. Mm -hmm. Um. Then including its own skill is going to give another plus five. So say you call it GG, it's going to be a twenty three on its own. You, there's a lot of good shit to talk about, but it's it is very simple. So it's a little bit bubble, also a self-explanatory. <laughs> Look, man, all right. Speaking is hard. Dear Reading God, is hard. It sounded and like seeing is hard. Everything is like hard. a video glitch, man. It's like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh yeah. So bad for the people listening to this. <laughs> Dear oh Lord, man. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that we have been having some audio glitches. And then when I did that, you probably thought, oh no, it happened again. <laughs> yeah. I, th I thought that was another, oh, here's another Apple issue. <laughs> anyway, 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 we're going to move it back on to set eight. And we're going to start talking about some of the glitter support. We've seen, we've talked about the <sighs> couple of generic cards that started leaking, but now we get to right. see exactly what the previous ride lines as well as the current glitter ride lines are getting some sort of uh, support. And yes, okay, Alex boys. is already prepping to push my buttons. Oh. Yeah, I'm all right. All right, boys. You, you see me? I'm going to walk away for a minute while Phil just takes an hour rant on this. Bye, guys. <sighs> He's not wrong. First one we're going to talk about is Song of Exaltment can be heard. It's a grade one normal order, double rare for chaos. Not the dragon, the dark states boy, chaos with a K. It's a fact. Play this card if you have a Vanguard with chaos in its card name. Choose one of your Vanguards and it gets power 10k until the end of turn. Choose three normal units from your drop, put them into your soul and put this card on the bottom of your deck. All right, listen here. <laughs> All right, Why? I'm going back in, but I'm going to let's hear this rant. <laughs> Why? We're going to be talking about the other because, uh, spoiler alert, every single one of the glitter ride lines got what a normal order support, or not normal, got an order as a support double rare. Uh, compared to every one of them, Chaos's is, is shit. It is not a little bit bad. It shit. Dude, can I tell you how many of the Chaos Order we pulled from our promo packs the other day? I don't want to <laughs> hear it. Shut up. I need some. <laughs> Please send them, but shut up. <laughs> this card, I don't know what to say about it. K giving Chaos 10k, fine. He wasn't that big of a power. Most people were easily guarding him, whatever. But at the same time, you're really not doing anything. And then, unless you want to play a really 
weird Highlander where most of your copies are one or two wolves, this card is never going to see good play because you got enough filter as it is. So most of the cards you have in your drop zone that are normal units are probably not going to be in your soul. And the most you're going to probably be putting in is PGs because that's the only thing you don't want to put into your soul selectively for the other effects that Chaos already has. <sighs> I see no merit in this card. I really don't see any merit in this card. Why does it have to say normal units? If you could just select triggers, then this card would have been jumping up by 20 fucking percent. Sorry, 200, not 20, but same thing. Yeah, yeah. Please just cover your fucking time of your card before I lose my brain cell. <laughs> Scarlet of uh, Fluttering Evanescent, Evanescence? Evanescent Life. Uh, grade 3 order. Double rare. Uh, play the, it's a normal order. Play this card with cost. Soul Blast 2 if you have a Vanguard with Tommy Urine in his card name. Choose up to one unit card with a Rara Me in his card name and up to one card with a Rara Me in his card name from each from your drop and call them to rear guard. See, why does he get an order like that and then Chaos gets fucking shafted? I mean, you want to elaborate on this beautiful order that you got for your deck that doesn't need more support than it already has? You can soul blast the, each one of the copies from your soul just to call them back and make two rear guards for one. And this is also a way to get them back from your drop if you don't see uh, broken toys. Most of the time you're going to go broken toys because broken toys is free and you just plus really too, too much off of that. But... If you're in a pinch, you can do this. Plus, it's a fox art, so you can search it off of your uh, ride line if you really need to. I'd say, like, run two of maybe is an option. To be fair, in set eight, we're going to be also seeing every single one of the glitter ride lines get another version of their dual nation card. Yep. Uh, again, spoiler, we already have confirmation that Rar Me and Rear Me in set eight are grade ones this time around. So maybe them being grade ones is going to make this order a lot more viable. Yeah. Anywho, we're going to move on from that before I actually get an aneurysm and just look at some Dark States comments. For <laughs> example, Dimness Fiend. I had read that correctly. Dimness Fiend. Yep. Uh, it's a grade 1 8k common. Auto rearguard when this unit boosts. If your soul has 5 or more cards, this unit gets power 5k until the end of battle. There's other cards that get gain 5k a lot easier inside of Dark States without a condition. So you're just... It's a common for I a reason. I honestly see no reason for this card to exist. But, you know, it's a common for a reason. That's good filler for people that need out their own budget. Correct. Just being able to just build a deck. Granted, we do know Silver Form is coming out, but at the same time, like I said, we already have a 13k base card, grade 1. Mm. It's the same thing. Unless you want more 13k grade 1s, I don't see no reason for this. Moving on to a Brent Gate common, however, High Flight Conversion Zerval zero, zero Qs. More robots for our non existent robot ride line. Yay. It's a I do like the art of this card. The what now? I do like the art of this card, though. Yeah, it looks like a jet transformer with a big ass Gatling gun. Mm hmm. Anywho, it's a grade 2 10k common. Auto rearguard when this unit attacks. If your order zone has three or more set orders with different card names, Soul Blast 1 and this unit gets power 10k until the end of that battle. The versatility of this card is questionable because uh, three or different set orders in their card names, not a lot of decks can actually do that. Um, on top of that, you're, this is also competing with Combine Rusher, which is obviously does the same thing for better and it calls itself back. You yeah. don't have to waste soul blast. Not better, easier. Like only two, and yeah. they don't even have to be different. Yeah, and he doesn't have to so the pay a counter blast or a soul blast to get the power. He just does it to get himself back from grave. So, uh, I, I mean, again, it's a common, so it's good for those on a budget. But otherwise, not really know why you'd run this over combine rusher. I do miss the days when commons were really good, and you ran them. For example, selfish engraver. You will always yeah. be one of the best examples out there for commons. <laughs> uh, speaking, speaking of, of commons, commons that, that are, are really actually good, actually good. Yeah, like holy cow! Uh, signpost fairy, um, common grade one. 
uh, auto when this unit is retired from rear guard by your card's ability. If your vanguard is a glitter, choose one of your grade one or less rear guards and it gets power plus 10 until the end of turn. Um, you saw me use this whenever I was playing Roa. This is amazing because you can eat it with the Momoke token and give it plus 15 off of just this alone. Or you can use it for the order and retire it. It doesn't matter how, as long as it's retired by a card effect and you have a, a row of Vanguard pretty much. Yep. And it's just a good card overall. It just, it's something that the Aurora deck really needed to make the Mocha token combo even more dangerous. Yeah, this is, this is easily like a four of in the deck. Now, there we go. Until you see... Oh, no, you already got one. We're going to actually get to it here, here right now. Because <laughs> yes. this is the reveals for it. Yeah, this is the one of the Tuesday streams. <laughs> uh, they got to order uh, to the Shining Stage. Why did they made this art? <laughs> I don't know. It makes me question everything about this deck now. Dude, uh, I just grade wanted to embrace you, you, all right? <laughs> that's a grade one normal order. Uh, play this card with cost Soul Blast 1 if you have Vanguard with Rowan. It's card name. Choose up to one card with a grade equal to or less than your Vanguard from your drop and call it to rear guard. Then, if you have a rear guard with Rattalina in this card name, you may call a plant token to rear guard. Beautiful part to note about this card. You can call Rattalina off of its effect and still get the plant token. Yep. So, this is just overall pretty good. Um, it's not as good as the set order, but you still probably would run like two to three of this, probably. It's one of those things, like, if you're playing against a deck that's a heavy retire and you're not seeing enough of your Rattalinas or you already used the order, the other set mm -hmm. order that gets them out of your deck and stuff like this, this is just a good way to get it back to the board for easy yeah. cost, as well as get an extra plant token for either a Momo okay or just attacking. Or this is good for the turn after you talk about the, we talk about the next card, where you can get back your Rattalina from the old set. I mean, just go for it, because, yeah, we uh, already mentioned we're getting new of the glitters, and this is the first one. Yep, Unraveling Flame Sword, or sorry, Unwavering Flame Sword, Rattalina. It's a gray three triple rare, dual nation. Um, auto rear guard at the beginning of your main phase. If you do not have a Momoke token, you may call up to one Momoke token to rear guard. Fun fact about this is unlike the old one, this one can be called to anywhere on rear guard, not just behind it. Um, Glitter Roa, um, for obvious reasons, auto hand, at the end of the battle that your Rattalina, uh, rear guard with Rattalina and his card name attacked, if your opponent's vanguard is greater or greater, cost to retire your rear guard with Rattalina and his card name and a Momoke token. Call this card to rear guard and increase this unit's power by the power of that Momoke token retired for the cost of this ability until the end of turn. Fuck. So now Aurora has a possibility of five attacks. Um, and a lot of them are going to be really big depending on how big Momoke is. Yep. Because most of the time you put the fucking triggers on the Momoke, don't you? Yeah, and on top of that, now that we have that grade one, the Momoke token's easily getting 30 or more. Yeah, and the set order as well as giving it 5k and on top of that. like Everything is there to make that Momoke token a good number and then give that good number to the Red Lina and then retire both to give the good number to this one. So overall, so, it's just going number, number, number. Roa was pretty much a powerhouse unless you're going against a Botus. Then you're kind of set. Yeah. Uh, one thing to note until the, uh, things change in our videos, this will never happen, but a, in actual tournaments, if you rip the over trigger, you're doing a stupid combo. <laughs> yeah, because you throw the 100 million on the Moke token, it swings for 100 million. The old, old Rattalina swings for 100 million, and then this swings for 100 million. It's like the uh, Care Bear combo, <laughs> but without yeah. CB. <laughs> yeah, you're just using Soul and Rear Guards. Ain't great. <laughs> anyway, with that car, car being covered, we're going to move on to whatever we got next. And in this case, it's a rare for Ketter. Knight of Hammer Breaking Sidi. She's a grade 2 10k power rare. Auto, when this unit is placed on rear guard by card's ability, Cannabis 1 draw a card and this unit gets power 5k until the end of turn. It's a utility honestly it's it replaces itself in its hand in your hand it is a 15k attacker thinking off the top of my head what decks can actually use this uh eva not eva uh Thegria, technically but that's two cb you can uh, technically use this inside of uh youthburg but finding the space for it's going to be an issue who, how do you how do you call this with an ability in youthburg 
uh, the oh, Vanguard skill. Yeah, yeah, you right. You can right. just discard a card, look at the top three, you can call it, and then if you want to, CB one to draw one, power plus five. Mm, I can see it. Or you could use the uh, triple rare from set seven to look at a top three, call it, and then do it if you have the CB for that. So in all technicality, Graham Grace is in this set as well as a double rare. Yes, uh, you and can you also can technically use that. call this off a of Graham Grace, draw a card. Give draw a, a card, 10, call 10, this, and then kind of plus one, draw a card again. So this can be a 25, and for two CB, you technically draw two cards. Yeah. It's CB heavy, definitely. But hey, it's an option. Yeah. All right, moving on to another Dark States common. We got Abrupt Raver. Uh, one of the coolest looking arts. Sorry to the podcast viewers. You're just going to have to look them up. Uh, but yeah. it is a grade one 8K continuous rigor during your turn. If your unit was placed on rigor from soul this turn, this unit gets power 5K, includes this unit. Uh, I can kind of predict that this will be a Makani Chaos support because there's a lot decent amount of cards in Chaos that lets you call Makani and other cards from your soul. But this again, this is a, for Silverthorn. For, oh, I was gonna say this can also be used for Silverthorn since it's gonna call things out of your soul to rearguard a lot of times. So correct. But then again, it's just a 13k booster that's hid behind a condition. I think in a previous set, we got a 13k booster that's hit behind another condition that can be potentially a lot easier to hit. So we're mm -hmm. seeing a lot of these 13k grade ones, and it just depends on what condition they have and what e is what is easier for your deck to hit. Yeah. Pretty much that. All right, moving on. I'm on a roll with my nations. <laughs> we got another <laughs> common grade one. Uh... Cerulean Heavy Gunner. Cerulean? Cerulean, whatever. Look, man, we already knew one of these cards is going to be mispronounced or misread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we got him. He's a grade one 8K auto. When this card is discarded from hand during your turn, if your Vanguard is grade three or grade greater glitter, Soul Blast one and you may call this card to your back row rear guard. If you call, this unit cannot attack until the end of turn. A uh, little bit uh, straightforward. This is only meant for Eva. That way, whenever mm -hmm. you play your grade two research, you draw a card, ditch a card. If this is the ditch target, so bless one, call it the rear guard. Yep. Very straightforward. Not bad. I'll leave it to the Eva players to figure out if there's space to play this because there's another card coming up that you want to make space for. Oh, oh yeah. But we go more. back. Sorry, what you want uh, to say? More, more of your nations. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll let you cover it because like I was wanting to say, we're going back to the Conjured Strike deck set. And now we're going to see two more cards that we're going to see in that deck that are kind of help, you know, just have more survivability because this is a product that is meant to be played outright. No extra support and mm -hmm. says just this alone. So it needs a little bit more defense. Exactly. Take it away. So... You got Street, uh, Steam Fighter Argandua. Uh, it's a grade two. Um, when this unit is placed on uh, Guardian Circle, costs Soul Blast one. And this unit gets shield plus five until the end of that battle. And then if you have a face up card in your G zone, it gets uh, 10 instead of five. So it becomes a, a 15K shield. Pretty good. I'm honestly a little bit jealous because back in the day, Bruce got a card that's basically the exact same effect. But mm -hmm. I only gained 5k for a counter blast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. This is just a soul blast. And, you know, it kind of intercepts or is, you know, pl plays from hand. So, yep. Oh, how far um, have we come? Yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's pretty good. Pretty beefy shield. Exactly. The next card is. Uh, I will say one thing about this card is a soul blast. Mm -hmm. And from what I've already seen for Gear Chronicle cards, soul will be an interesting resource management. So have fun with that, players. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. We got Gear Cero of Magnetic Resonance. Uh, it's a grade one uh, AK auto and rear guard, auto continuous rear guard. <laughs> Jeez, I can't English. During your turn, <laughs> if any player's rear guard was put to the bottom of your deck this turn, this unit gets power plus five, so it becomes a 13k. And then continuous rear guard generation break one. Um, this unit gets intercept and can intercept from the back row. I mean, so it's honestly it not good. bad. 13k booster or attacker, and it has intercept if you have GP. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna do the job. 
if you need a little extra 5k shield there's there it is i mean and then the fun part is is if you use this with fate or uh, fate rider a uh, fate rider i think his name is uh the stride yeah, you can yeah, call yeah. this from the grade zero and then have it in the front row the 13k attacker or bigger probably 23 and then you can intercept with it because you're going to have your gb active true very true all the good things anyway yes back to set eight we go and time to look at a little couple more of the glitter orders the double rares that we're going to be getting and alex i know hector was over there and helped us record this mm -hmm. specific card uh what did he think about it um he liked the idea of you know being able to manipulate this but let's see what it does first and then we'll talk about it uh dark magenta of blooming hatred Mar magenta magenta i think, I think right. you, uh, magenta yeah let's go mag magenta. magenta uh play this if you have a vanguard with degree and its card name so a grade three a grade two set order uh auto when this unit is put into the order zone you can pay the cost to counter blast one and draw a card uh act order zone if you have a grade three vanguard with degree and its card name you can cost put this card into your drop zone Choose up to one grade three or greater card with Degri and its different card name from your Vanguard from your hand and write it as stand. So now you can just play one version of Thegria the entire game because <laughs> you Persona ride in the opposite version and then you ride back with using this to the other version. So if you just want constant restanding Vanguards, you can go for it. You can technically Hence go Hector constant the other way around as well. But, you yes. know, one is definitely better than the other. <laughs> yes. But regardless, this just allows you to say, eh, I really need to be on this this turn, not this turn. I'm going to fix that. I do like the fact that they this, they make this a grade two set order because you like get to play this on your grade two turn if you see it. And then when you get to your grade three turn, you can play the other promo order that lets your, increases your persona rights to 15 and draws you two cards when you persona ride. It gives yeah. you a nice little filter, so you still want to get to your turn four when you do most of your shenanigans. Because the one downside of this card immediately that we saw in playtesting is, yes, you get to do your Fegri abilities, the whole restands, sooner, but you don't get power from your Persona Rise that you usually rely on. So your Rearguards, unless they're boosted, are puny, and your Vanguard is only swinging for 13 if it's not boosted. Yes, But if you do Persona Ride, you do get to keep the Persona Ride afterwards. Correct. I will say this, though. Um, there's a really, really good tech option with this card that I don't think Hector played. Uh, there is a grade three dragon that came with youth Burke that says whenever your Vanguard is placed by a card's ability, uh, it gets a guard restrict if you can't guard with normal units. Um, you can now play that guard restrict in Thegria because you can use this to ride up with that card effect. There's two things. One, you could technically already play a guard restrict in Thegria because in set seven, I want to say, we got mm -hmm. a grade three it says if we persona roll this turn, it gains 5k and it's a Baladora. Yes. But uh, the good thing about the dragon, though, is if you hit a over, uh, the over trigger, it's it almost in, uh, unguardable. It is. The only way to guard. The only thing no, you can, you can still use the blitz, blitz order. Yeah. But it's almost virtually unguardable if you do that. So. The, the only, there is one side about both of those cards that we just mentioned, and that is the fact that Thegria, especially Light Thegria, you still want to use your ability to populate a board for uh, easily, but if you play too many grade, zero, uh, grade threes, you're not going to be able to do that. Like Hector had one big problem during our gameplay, and he, excuse me, and he mentioned it during the video. He's going to be revisiting the deck and completely building it differently mm. because he was struggling seeing his lower grades because he saw a lot of grade threes, a lot of set orders, and not a lot of the other stuff. Yeah, fair. Anyway, moving on. Ah, yes. Yeah, here we go. You can take this one. Uh-huh. So before we talked about the common grade uh, two that Soul Blast for, uh, gained 10k for three different cards, and it was like, not a lot of decks can do that. Orphis is a good example of a deck that can. And now Eva has joined that party because they got another research card called The World in a Blue Research Lab. It is a grade three set order research, of course. Uh, and it goes to something a little like this. Play this if your Vanguard is a glitter with Eva in its card name. Auto, when this card is put into the order zone, look at the top five cards of your deck. Choose up to one card from among them. Call it to rear guard and shuffle your deck. And, uh, deck. and then act. Order zone. Soul Blast 1 and rest three research cards in your order zone. Choose one of your glitter units and it gets power 5k until the end of turn. 
couple of things immediately to mention here. One, this is a play a set order, get a unit on the board card. Uh, two, most of the times uh, that unit is going to be something called an obscurate. And three, that obscurate was called by a card's ability, and probably because this is a grade three research, and we have a grade one and two research already, there's probably going to be three researches in your res- uh, in your order zone, which means that obscurate is going to get a critical <laughs> because of it. And if you have three researches, not only does he gain the critical, but you can give an extra five to make it 28, which is a magic number. I do love what Long was doing after the video. This card mm-hmm. does give... 5k to a glitter unit you can technically give it to the vanguard yes and that is honestly not a bad move because eva herself gives uh, 5k f- to herself when you use candle blast to look at x number and add something to your hand give it mm-hmm. another 5k puts her alone to 23 which is honestly a very hard number to guard easily especially when you're staring down a barrel of a, a double critical rear guard <laughs> yes so overall this card's a good card Oh yeah, like Eva is getting better and better with every research being added, and this is just another, this is just another bullet <laughs> to, that she can kill you with. Yes, uh, is that all of the one orders so far? No, uh, let's see here. We got Chaos, we got Tamira, we covered Roro, we covered Fegra, and we just covered Eva. So yes, that was all yeah. of the uh, orders, double rares that the previous glitter ride lines have gotten. What's your what were you thinking with chaos? Anyways, Dude, I'm forward. not even joking. You see what I'm talking about now, right? Yeah. Every single one Any- of these is actually good, and then chaos is over here going, what the fuck? Next up, we got a uh, common for cutter. It's a uh, memorous here. Um, auto, when this unit is placed on rear card, if your soul has a grade three card cost, put a grade three card from your hand into your soul, draw a card, and this gets power plus five until the end of turn. Um, this is just really good for doing what their grade was wanting you to do in the late game. Instead of having to use the angel to get there, you can just use this and get the draw card on top of it. Yeah, because one of the things with Fegger is that Mabel has the Soul Blast cards and then you grab a grade equal to those Soul Blast cards from your Soul added to hand. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of times you're going to Soul Blast your grade 1 and grade 2 right line to add a grade 3 Fegria, but then after that you're kind of struggling with putting cards in the Soul and Soul Blasting grade 3s to put back grade 3s or the cards. This is just a good way to go, okay, let me put in a grade 3 that I don't need into my Soul. Now I have two of them in there. Mabel's going to mm-hmm. Soul Blast one, add the other one back to my hand, and I'm already and this card's going to replace it anyway. And it's also going to be a 13k, either booster or an attacker, honestly. Yeah. Well, otherwise, it seems pretty solid. I can definitely see play for this card. I think there's better cards that Thagria players are going to go for above mm. this, but definitely can see play for it. Okay. Oh, you got this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got to the Thursday stream of this previous week, and this Thursday stream revealed to us the new Brent Gay ride line inside of Set 8. Uh, unlike the other ride lines inside of Set 8, this Brent Gay one and the uh, Dragon Empire one are going to be new ones. Connected to glitter. I say connected and I'll explain here in a bit, but the other ride lines are going to be the encounter cards So these are going to be special and oh boy, did we not kind of foresee how they're going to do this and I'm Mm -hmm. loving how they did it So we're going to start off with the starter and see where this fiend goes a moment of rest arc arc height Hold up Did they change the name on me again? All right Last time, or when we made the proxies, it was called Alkite. Now it's called Arkite. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to figure it out. Anyways, Arkite, she is also a research-based deck. Uh, we'll see that in the grade one. But one thing I want to point out in the starter art immediately, you can actually see Eva's hand waving to her in the top left corner. <laughs> yep. That's a little bit of a nifty nod that I do appreciate what sure I'm doing. Anyway, hopefully Tommy Yura's alternate red line does something similar. Exactly. Anyway, we're going to move on to Searching for Monster Souls Archite. Uh, Monsters is going to be a very important part here. We're going to get to that in a bit. But her ability is auto. When this unit is placed by riding a moment of rest Archite, search your deck for up to one research card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your deck. So this is going to be a deck that shares research set orders with Eva. 
However, if you remember when we covered the grade three research, it said specifically Glitter and Eva, which means this one cannot use it. Same thing can be said for the grade one promo research card for Eva. It is also Eva restricted. Which so, means um, at this saying we're point, getting more yes. research cards. Hmm? <laughs> so what we're saying is we're getting more research cards. <laughs> Pretty much. At this point, the only research card that Arkwright can actually play would be the grade two research. Draw a card, ditch a card. If you have three, soul bless one, bind a card. Yes. Uh, we're going to look at real quick. Guarding of the slumbering Arkwright. Auto when this unit is placed by riding from searching on monsters solo Arkai, search your deck for up to one research card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your deck. So it's the same ability as a grade one, and it's the same type of ride line as Eva. Your ride line mm. searches two researches and adds them to your hand. Simple, straightforward. A uh, yep. cool part about Arkai, though, as you probably are already noticing in the arts, and for our uh, audio only listeners, there's a lot of monsters and kaijus in the background of her arts. That's mm -hmm. because she's mostly going to be working with these monsters and kajus, and the research she's mostly going to be using is Torrent Energy Research. It's a grade one set order rare, and it's got a big-ass Godzilla shooting lava out of its hands on the art. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. This research is auto when this card is put into your order zone, reveal the top five cards of your deck. Choose up to two cards with monster in their card names from among them. Put one card from among them into your hand and put one card from among them into your drop. And shuffle your deck. And then act. Order zone. Rest this card. Choose up to one card with monster in its card name from your drop and put it into your order zone. So... This is getting interesting fast. One, there's a good amount of the monster cards already out. When we were building this deck, there was approximately 18 cards with monster in their card name inside of Brain Gate. One of them was even a PG. And what this order does, immediately it plays itself, filters two cards out of your deck off the top eight, of course, or top five, of course. Of course mm -hmm. Adds one back to your hand and adds one to your drop. And so not only did you deck thin technically three cards counting the set order itself, but you also netted zero cards inside of your hand, which is beautiful in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Another thing to know immediately is the fact that it puts cards from the drop zone into the order zone. And why does it do that? Oh boy. It is a fun mechanic, I gotta say. Mm. Monster Creator Arkwright. She's the grade three triple rare main boss unit of this ride line. And she's got a couple of nifty abilities. Auto Vanguard, when your rear guard with monster in its card name is placed, put a card with the same card name as that unit from your order zone on the bottom of your deck. And that unit gets power 10k until the end of the turn. So this is just a buffer to anything you call and anything you have in your order zone. Mm -hmm. And you basically just put it back to deck, give the thing you called 10k power, and just go. Yep. And it's not a once per turn. Nope. And then we look at the second ability. Auto Vanguard, when this unit attacks, if your order zone has a research card, can I bless one and perform all of the following? If your order zone has three or more research cards, choose up to one of your rear guards with monster in its card name and put it into your order zone. And then the second one is look at the top seven cards of your deck, choose up to one card with monster in its card name, call it to rear guard and shuffle your deck. So her second ability not only uh, clears up a rear guard space and puts a copy into the order zone that you might be able to call, put to the bottom and give it the unit called 10k power, but it also looks at top seven, calls a monster, which means it facilitates multi-attack with four, uh, four attacks in a turn. Alex, some thoughts? Uh, it's a cool way to multi-attack. Good power. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is a fun, interesting engine for a deck that we never saw coming. I know, right? <laughs> for those of you listening and or watching, the gameplay video of this is already out. And I've got to say, this has been a lot of fun to play. I did not expect myself to have so much fun playing this ride line. <laughs> Now, of course, the monster cards that are out, 
they're out. A couple of lists them off. Tecton's a monster. Boba Main was errata to a monster. There's a couple of uh, mutant cards that have been errata to monsters. So make sure you check that list. Um, and there's a lot, a couple of other good monsters here and there. But of course, they had to give us two more monsters to kind of help this deck go along. One of which is a grade three double rare 13k base volcano monster Gokatera. Gojira. <laughs> junior for anybody who's watched mm. the video yes <laughs> uh, junior's effect is auto when this unit is placed on rear guard can a blessed one choose one of your opponent's rear guards with grade equal to or less than the number of research cards in your order zone and retire it so cb1 retire is honestly not a bad effect to have in standard right now and then its second ability is auto when this unit attacks. If your order zone has three or more research cards, this unit gets power 5k until the end of battle, making it an 18k attacker on its own. If you had a copy of it in the order zone when you placed it on Arc Crate, it's a 20k, 28k attacker on its own. Mm -hmm. Those are magic numbers right there. <laughs> yep. You hitting like a truck. <laughs> and if your Persona Road is 38. 38, yep. Oh, dude, Persona Ride in this deck is so much fun. <laughs> All right, but the other monster we got is actually a grade one triple rare monster, Radio Wave Monster v -Buros. It's an 8K that apparently in the art is working with the humans, which I find very uh, appealing for some reason. But this monster is not only for our crit, it's also for Eva, because auto, when this unit is placed on rear guard, if you have a glitter with Eva in its card name or a Vanguard arc right in its card name on your Vanguard, a Soul Blast to draw a card. And then continuous rear guard during your turn. If your order zone has three or more research cards, this unit gets power 5k, making it a 13k booster or attacker. This card, in my opinion, is the MVP when I was playing it. <laughs> Just realized this is the triple rare. Yeah, this is the triple rare. Yeah. This is a fucking amazing trip where Soul Blast 2 for draw is honestly not a bad cost. Eva has the resources because it's never going to Soul Blast 3 to draw through its other monster. And yes, that grade one I mentioned is a monster. And then on top of that for Arkwright, the, depending on how you make your deck, almost no card Soul Blasts, which means if you Persona Ride or if you use Boba Main, for example, you can get two of these off and get two draw two cards off of their abilities. And not to mention, you can even draw during the battle phase, because if you call this off of Arkwright's ability of top seven, Soul Blast mm -hmm. you draw on top of just, you know, deck filtering. Pretty good. Dude, I have so and much I like to say how about it works this deck, I don't want to take it up the whole video. <laughs> Yeah, I like how it is both for Glitter and, and for Arkite. So basically, it's it's not wasting a triple rare slot for either of the decks. No. And having a 13k attacker or even booster, or for Arkite, technically it can be a 23k attacker just on its own. It's mm -hmm. just good. Yeah. All right. Enough of me ranting about this beautiful ride line. We'll do more videos about it down the road. Before we move yes. on to the next card, I do want to point out a little bit of speculation that we had. Because this ride line is its own ride line. It does its own gimmicks, but it does borrow stuff from EVA in the sense of researches and cards that can work with EVA as well. Yes. We mentioned there's a Dragon Empire ride line. Thoughts? Um, hopefully, it's also going to work around stealth because we got Forktail, which... Uh, Fortel searches for either a glitter or a card with stealth in its card name. So it's kind of similar to what we saw with the triple rare for we just covered. So it might end up just being a stealth themed deck and having cards that also can be worked with Tamiura with interacting with Soul. Exactly. And to kind of help this theory go along, the next card we're going to cover is a good example. Uh, yes, yeah, so we got uh, Static Crack Dragon. Yep. Uh, it's a double rare, uh, grade one, AK auto we're in a, during your turn when your other unit is placed on rear guard and uh, in the same column as this unit, that placed unit gets power plus five until the end of turn. So already, if you're using uh, Tamiura, you, anything you call from your soul or you just place from your hand, it's going to get power plus five if it's in front of it. Okay. So overall, just really good way of hitting those numbers that you couldn't you had issues hitting before. Well, this card is really good in a lot of decks, like Tamir is a good example. One, because mm -hmm. not only do you gain the 5k, it's not a once per turn. Because in the way Tamir works, you're basically going to be giving 5k to the caller. The card gets called out of soul as well, and then boosts mm -hmm. on top of it as well if you want to. 
So exactly. you technically have a card that gives 18K power in one column. It's just a question of how you want to distribute it. Exactly. Overall, a double rear of this magnitude is not bad. The only thing I do want to mention it, it's been a long time since I saw a Nurakami esque art style and not have the word bind in it. <laughs> Oh no, like it seems weird, but regardless, I like that we're still going back to Nurakami aesthetics. It makes <laughs> me feel nice. It feels nice. The Nurakami main in you is happy. Yes. <laughs> anyway, with Literally. that card being covered, that has actually been it for the weeks till up to now. Um, there's, of course, there was a lot to talk about because of new ride lines, a lot of cards we haven't been done beat time in a while and so forth and so forth but with that being covered we're actually going to hit the news section and we got still a decent amount to talk about so strap yourself in and oh boy there's some spice but before that if you're interested in any of the cars we just mentioned go check out triple sleeve tcg they got great deals on singles clan splits and even cases so go check out the website link will be in the description all right so first off what we want to talk about in the news section is the fact that Dear Days is soon to be coming out. It is currently November 6th at the time of recording this voice and video podcast. Um, yep. And that means there's about 11 days away till Dear Days actually drops. With that being said, however, they did announce that additional car passes, DLC basically, will be included inside of Dear Days starting 11, uh, November 11th that will be able to be purchased. And basically, Alex, what is these additional pass car things going to be including? Uh, it's going to be including Booster Set 6, um, Lyrical Booster Set 3, Booster Set 7, and the uh, Chrono Jet Stride deck set. Ah, did you hear that just now? Mm. My ears screech from Eric's excitement. <laughs> oh, oh, there, there it is. I have a here. <laughs> yeah, it takes a little bit while to get across the ocean for you guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, this is really good news because one of the fears about Deer Day since it was announced that only up until set five and some festival collections is going to be in the game was getting a little bit concerned. But with, now with this, we kind of get a good confirmation that we're not only we're getting these sets with all these good cards, so Youthberg, uh, Jewel, the new ride lines, Arkite, and stuff like that, as well as Chrono Jet. It's also giving us a little bit of a more padded, um, what's the word? Feeling of security that as sets are going to be coming out in the physical game, we're going to be getting mm -hmm. more and more DLC updating the Deer Days with those same sets, which is Hopefully. when I'm going to scream when Messiah fucking gets into included in the game. Or booster set nine with Bruce. Oh my God, away Bruce! I know he's not called away Bruce, but he the when, whoever said that he's got an away jersey is sticking to me so much, and I'm loving it. So I'm calling him away Bruce. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Anyways, moving forward, I uh, got more to talk about. Exactly. Anyway, moving on into the new section. Uh, they also Bushiro, Bushiro, They also announced during one of the streams that they're going to be making more sleeves available to the game. It's just a little bit of a n nice nod, but I do like the fact that these sleeves on 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 camera now. I'm sorry for the audio listeners are going to be coming in. The sleeves are of Aichi and Chrono in a very what's the word? Are, I think these are like arts that were happened in Zero, and they just decided to print them as the actual sleeves. Exactly, but we'll also be getting sleeves from the anime for Team Trinong. Please help. Trina God Youth and Anchor Bolt. Yes. So if you know what those sleeves look like, we're actually going to get those sleeves in physical. And oh boys, I know some people were really excited because these designs do actually look very cool. Yes. All right. Uh, as per mentioned, when we were covering the EVA cards, there, there's going to be a lot of support for that deck, and they're going to be, I believe, reprinting, if I'm not mistaken on this. Let me just double check. Uh, some cards, some monsters, and some research cards. Old monster and research cards that can be used. Okay, no, no not reprinting. These are basically just examples of stuff of the that you can use in the deck. I probably yes. should have mentioned this when we were covering the monster set, but, you know, reading is hard, so I'm mentioning it now. I'm not even joking. I am very much considering putting the monster PG in there. <laughs> Just being able to recycle PGs. It is, you know, a cost. If I have one card in hand, I, I'm going to have to did something to use it. But at the same time, it's like I can recycle PGs. 
uh, moving on, next thing. Um, yeah, so fun fact, uh, Bush Road Rumble happened. Um, and apparently, I can't remember, was it the first place? I believe I it, was a, it was either third place or se- something like that. Not 100% it somebody, sure. It was somebody in top eight, apparently, has been, um, I want to say accused. I don't think they've been proven, but. They have been suspected has been, of cheating. It's suspe- has been suspected of cheating. So um, they're investigating as we speak on, on that matters. Um, and fun fact of if you are caught cheating in Bushy Road Rumble also means that you can get banned from physical tournaments. Yep. So, yeah. Um, I hope that there's, you know, there was no cheating, but they are investigating that as we talk. There's two things I want to mention. One is kind of like a gray area side of... I, I do love that they're doing this. Like, I know. Talk about the first point. Don't cheat. Don't cheat. Just don't cheat. We're all here to have fun in the game. Yes, it's competitive in these events, and you want to get top place, but do it the right way. Use your skill and pray whatever goat you sacrifice to get the best luck in possible. But don't cheat. <laughs> don't cheat. Uh, but what uh, I want to mention about that is for the people that are, for example, banned to tournaments, if there is a list. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they're going about making sure that those people are actually getting, you know, restricted. Because at this current moment, especially BCS, a lot of it's happening through, you know, registering and using Balfi names and stuff like that. And there's not really a verification of identity process. So people can be putting in their fake names and going in. Granted, once they top and then, you know, their real name would be come out somehow, they would get banned. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it doesn't stop them from participating in that one tournament. Yeah. But, you know, I'm sure they have a way of doing it. I trust Bush uh, Road on this aspect. So we're going to have to move on to the other parts that I don't trust Bush Road. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, Erotalists. So obviously, uh, V Clan selection five and six had um, a lot, and I mean a lot of a rod of misprints, and not just V Clan collection, man. Boost set six, boost set seven, yeah. a lot of like a lot of them. Um, Bushy Road does acknowledge that there was an issue, um, and are issuing a an exchange program. If you go to, uh, I think it's any regional event or world event. Um, if you have any of the misprinted cards, they you can exchange them for the actual rotted version. Yes, starting uh, in 2023, we'll any world and uh, and then moving on Spring Fest event, we'll have these exchange programs. So if, as long as you bring your cards, you should be able to get the exchanged cards. Of course, while stock lasts, I want to say. I, I don't know mm-hmm. if that part was mentioned, but I want to assume. Because, you know, you, not everybody. I'm hoping they're going to have enough for everybody. But at the same time, you know, you never know. Exactly. But hopefully, you know, Bushy Road acknowledges, you know, that this is an issue and is fixed, preventing it from happening in the future. Speaking of acknowledging, this was one of the steps towards that because, uh, let's see here, today is the 6th. Two days ago, Bushy Road made an announcement that they have heard the community again. Last yeah. time I remember this happening on this scale is when Zazan was a thing. And basically, they have issued a type of apology letter and update letter to kind of inform the players of what exactly has been going on. And what caused this? Only uh, three letters can explain what caused this. N F T. Yeah. Well, not only that, but, you know, obviously one of this one of the fucking reasons. There is three three major things. One of them is obviously the erratas. Yeah. Um, but she wrote you know, and announced, you know, hey, we noticed we eroded the monsters and mutants. We noticed we had eroded this. We we're sorry for having to make so many erratas. And I do agree that erratas are worse than just straight up getting rid of a card, mm-hmm. at least you know, in banning sense, because then it just makes things really complicated for newer players that you know don't read the errata list and stuff like that, and they go in thinking it's this, and then. People have to explain to them, no, that's not how it works. And not to mention, some of the erratas are not even effect erratas. Some of them are just plain old, this is just and wrong. So, yeah. And then, uh, for instance, like uh, last night I was doing this uh, premium tournament and I left Lawn to play Eradicators. Uh, one of the gray twos that you want to ride looks at the top five and then adds a, a uh, Eradicator to your name. It doesn't say shuffle. So he had to ask me, he's like, am I supposed to shuffle? I'm like, no, no, no. It's probably an errata. Shuffle your deck. There we go. But There's a lot of cards just, like that. 
And we already mentioned Bashur is going to be making an effort to replace those cards. But the other two reasons this apology letter came out is the the second reason that's a little bit not as big, I want to mm-hmm. say, is the fact that a lot of people have been complaining about the promo pack distribution, especially here on the English international side. In, yes. in JP, getting promos, I don't know how hard or easy it is, but there is a lot more local stores, there's a lot more Vanguard events, and there's a lot more ways to be obtain them. Mm-hmm. However, on the international side, there's our stores that supply Vanguard and then hold regular tournaments. In America, there's a good amount of them, but in Europe, they're few and far between. Not everybody supplies. The promo searching game is real. And because yeah. of those hardships of con- getting those promos, those promos start getting on the secondary market and you start seeing prices between $20 to $50. And I'm not even exaggerating. Oh, it's more than that, actually. Um, I think I saw on eBay the Eva Promo Hollow was 80 and the regular was 50. There we go. So um, distribution and, yeah. of those promos has been a problem. And distribution of promos in general in the international st- uh, side of Vanguard in the English side of Vanguard, uh, has been a problem for a while now. Mm-hmm. Bush Road has so, come and set out that they will be fixing this problem by putting promos, especially the fucking good ones, <laughs> inside mm-hmm. of booster boxes as boot box toppers. Yep. And then there are going to be common versions. And then the one shops, the PR uh, promos in the shops are going to be foil versions of those cards. Correct. Now I'm going to so, piggyback off of my friend Echo here on one point that he made, and that is the fact that this move is really good. I don't know if you mentioned that fact that this move is really good, but I think like really he great. thinks this move is really good. But this really will good. give a lot of power to vendors, as some vendors do sell play sets, not just boxes, which means those box promos are going to be in their possession to do whatever they want with them. Uh, it depends yes. on what the vendors want to do and how they're going to take care of this problem. We'll see when that happens. But hopefully this will get resolved. It does give more incentive to buying boxes, which from a marketing perspective is not a good move on Bush Road's side. Mm -hmm. On a player perspective, it's also not a bad move because this just means the promos are going to be easier accessible, but not, you know, not the easiest. The easiest would be just literally saying, hey, give us your mailing address or just mail you the fucking promo. (laughs) Exactly. Um, And then the last thing is the NFTs. Mm Mm-hmm. The whole, if you buy, get an LSR, you get an NFT uh, card for that LSR. For a uh, uh, lyrical Seth 3, to be clear. <laughs> yes. For if you get an LSR, yes. Um, I don't know why they thought this was a good idea, but um, the community voiced on how they did not like this idea. And Bashira responded and realized, you know, hey, we heard that you were unhappy about this and we're going to make ways of fixing it in the future. Yep. Uh, personally, I don't much care for NFTs, never did, never will. And I don't know exactly what they are, how they work, yada, yada, yada. Like, I got a it's, good it's, glimpse, it's, good idea of the mechanics and what NFTs mean and all that. Don't, I'm not completely clueless. But whenever this happened for Vanguard, I'm like, why are we doing this? Like, it's legitimately pointless. So from my perspective, I was like, what the fuck? I don't care. But most people do care and they brought up good points and this is a really valid reason why the community riled that this was not a good idea and i'm glad they did yeah that's a good thing they announced that they're addressing it and fixing it anyway with all that being said we're about to hit the hour mark on my side maybe a little bit less depending on how video editing goes but Mm -hmm. we're gonna end this episode here we got we talked about a lot we covered a lot and we got and got back on track so next three times are gonna be a little bit easier oh please future philip please tell me you figured out and put this actually on a podcast site so you didn't just lie at the beginning (laughs) yes but with that, unless Alex has anything else he wants to cover or add, we're going to be slowly ending this episode here. Nope, I don't have anything else. Oh, well, there we go. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching and listening to episode 150 of V Time. If you like what we do here, subscribe to the channel and ring that bell and get notified. Maybe even follow. Hold up. No, I am fucking up the whole thing. <laughs> Ooh, it's Wonderful. been a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you like what we, uh, the video, please leave a like, share with your friends, comment down below what you think about anything we mentioned either our credit the new ride line 
Chrono Jet, yada, 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 or the Bush Road admitting their mistakes and making some fixes. Other than that, if you like what we do here, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell to be notified. Maybe even follow us on Twitter or like us on Facebook. Join us at Discord, watch us on Twitch, and listen to us on whatever podcast site I put this on. <laughs> yes. But with that being said, I have been Philip. This is Alex. And we'll see you guys or in the next one. Bye. Woo! Oh, I really do hope I put this. I really do hope I sit down and actually figure this out. I really do okay. hope. <laughs> actually, I need your opinion. Should Jess we put- is screaming at me. We feel like we gotta go. Uh, she's been waiting on me for 30 minutes. Let's go. Oh, shit. Fine. Just, yeah, give me a post. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs>